Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's wonderful to see a sea of yellow today. Welcome to Northport Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. We made another change to our face mask policy. As we continue to monitor COVID, um, at this time masks are optional if vaccinated and strongly recommended if unvaccinated. Reminders, deacons will meet Tuesday at 3 p.m. Women's breakfast is Wednesday morning and men's breakfast is Thursday morning. At the end of each pew is the red attendance book. Please sign your name, pass it down in the pew so everyone can sign and then return the book back to the aisle of the pew. We thank you for doing this and I'll get ours as soon as I get back to my pew. Uh, the last Thursday of this month will be home Bible study. If you have any questions, please see Dolores Edwards. Raise your hand. She, need, she does need hosts for May through December, so think about that. On May 1st, we will kick off our new church year. In celebration of that, we will once again offer fellowship hour following worship. We have volunteers for the three, first three weeks, but we need more. Sign-up sheet is hanging in fellowship hall. New list to sign up to volunteer for ushers, greeters, acolytes, and picking up flowers from the florist are also posted in the fellowship hall. We need for May to December. Today's flowers are given by Polly Perkins and Tom Hext to honor their grandsons Griffin and Bodie Illenberger. Did I get that right? Okay. And before I forget, uh, Winona v Vinoy's 90th birthday will be coming up. And if you'd like to send a birthday card, call the church office for her new Texas address. And Margaret Cook has an announcement. Good morning. Um, this is our last Sunday here before going back north, so I just wanted to touch base with a few more things about our trip to the Ark Encounter next April. Um, many have talked to me about wanting to go but until I get a deposit, I can't sign you up. And those who want to join, who have already gone up north, more than welcome, but you still need to sign up and pay a deposit if you're gonna ride with us on the bus throughout that week. Patty Burke graciously offered to include my Michigan address and cell phone number in the newsletters. Payments can be made throughout the year. Um, the final payment is due next February. The trip insurance um, listing is attached to the flyer, and you can sign up for that if you desire to have the insurance either online or you can send a check to me as well with that check made out to the insurance company. Please include when you do sign up if there's any dietary restrictions, um, if you need any handicap rooms, um, and please include your cell phone number um, so sometime throughout your payment or signing up, so I have that when we are on the trip. And I guess that's it. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to tell you, you know the girls that we had here Christmas Eve, for those of you who were here singing, um, the high school production is, uh, theater department is doing Mary Poppins, and the show is uh, the 8th through the 10th, so next weekend. And I just wanted you guys to be aware of it because both of those young ladies and many more very talented kids are going to be putting on um, the show, the musical Mary Poppins next week if you would like to go. Um, you could get tickets at the box office over there. You could get them when you, when, when you arrive if you'd like to. I just wanted to make sure you guys knew about that because those girls did such a wonderful job for us that we could go support them. Thank you. And now Pastor Attilo to introduce our guests, introduce our guests. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you here. Well, I would like to begin introducing our guests with a scripture from Deuteronomy 2419. It says, when you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. 
It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. The Ukraine is actually considered the breadbasket of that region. I know that because it is a beautifully agriculturally blessed country, and I thought this scripture might be very befitting. We're welcoming today um, Mike Mikhail and Irina Kruzinski, and then our musical guests are Vera and Luba Kozakova. Uh, is there anybody else that you brought that I forgot? All right, let's give them a hand. Welcome. Reminder, if you have a cell phone, we ask that you please turn it off or turn it on silent. Let us be in worship. Let us stand and pray together. Lord God, we thank you that uh, you have invited us into your presence this morning, and we invite the Holy Spirit to move upon our speaker today. Lord, bless him, and uh, every word that he speaks, those that sing and uh, play music for us, bless their uh, talent so that it would bring glory to you. And we thank you today, Lord, that we can pray for the people of the Ukraine. We can pray for those that are in responsible leadership positions. Uh, we have talked this morning in our Bible study about spiritual blindness. We pray that our eyes would be opened, that our hearts would be transformed, and that your Holy Spirit would move in a way that we would feel the love of God and we pray for this war to end and that there would be a shalom, a peace, and that those that are now running and fleeing for their lives and seeking protection and shelter would be able to return back home. There's no place like home. Thank you, Lord, that um, we can open up our hearts today and receive what you have. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that there is a Redeemer. Let's remain standing and we're singing an uh, opening hymn, There is a Redeemer.
You may be seated. Last stanza one more time. It says, When I stand in glory, I will see his face. There I serve my king forever in that holy place. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. And uh, that's what we are grateful for. We um, are having celebrations and concerns. Um, first of all, if you are traveling back, that this is your last Sunday and you're going back up north, would you please raise your hand? Oh my goodness. Two more in the choir. Well, why don't you all stand, those of you that are leaving? Well, we just want you to know that our church would not be what it is without you. May God bless you and be safe as you travel. Please let us know once you have arrived back home safely, and we can't wait for you to come back. Let's give him a hand. All right, thank you. You may be seated. And then I see a newly wed couple in our midst, uh, Rosemary and Philip. They just got married uh, not too long ago. Let's give them a hand. They're right back there. Raise your hand so we know who you are. Okay, they were married here in our church not too long ago. They have a wonderful family, and they just returned from their honeymoon. Is that correct? Very good. All right, so celebrations and concerns. Um, we are going to have the names of those individuals that we pray for regularly go along on the screen. And you, where you're seated, please pray for them, and then I will lead us in prayer. ask how many of you have an unspoken request this morning? Raise your hand. That's many of you. Um, let's turn to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you um, that you have sent your son Jesus into this world, not just as our redeemer, but also as our healer and restorer. Uh, with you, new beginnings are always possible. And so for those that are ill, Lord, we pray that you would um, place your healing hand upon them and by the power and might of your Holy Spirit, you would flow through their, every cell in their body and restore them to good health. Thank you that we can come to you with these things, uh, with the unspoken requests. Uh, you know each story, and you know the answer. Please open up wide your great storehouse of love and provision and meet the needs that are present in your people's hearts today. And thank you um, that you love us so. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And then uh, back to celebrations, uh, birthdays. Today, Don Lytle and Mary Jane Schaeferly are celebrating their birthday. Is that correct? Well, happy birthday and um, good health. How much? 89. 89. Okay, well, happy birthday. <laughs> All right. Well, we never thought of you any older than 39 ever. <laughs> All right. Glenda Martin and Cheryl Norris are celebrating their birthday, and I forget that you are celebrating your birthday on the same day, and you are best friends, too. Isn't that wonderful? And that's on Thursday. No, Tuesday. Tuesday. Any plans for your birthday? Okay, well, 
Happy birthday, Glenda Martin and Cheryl Norris. And then anniversaries tomorrow. Neville is in Canada. Uh, he is busy there over the tax season and he runs his own business there. He leaves for several months to do that. But Neville and Barbara are celebrating their wedding anniversary tomorrow. And how many years have you been married? 58. Congratulations. Right. Is there anybody who we forgot to mention, birthdays or uh, anniversaries? Well, if not, then let's sing happy birthday, happy anniversary. Happy birthday to you. So now let me ask, is Lou Sorrentino here? Yes. Where is he? Oh, okay, come on up. <laughs> come on up, brother. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. I was asked to come up here and just say a few words about myself and how I found to come to this church. Back in 2018, my wife and I, Cynthia, which is sitting down there in the pew, due to medical conditions, she can't come up here and stand next to me. But besides that, she's really lazy. <laughs> you know? I had to throw that in a little bit. <laughs> All right, so in 2018, we moved here from Connecticut. We went to a couple of churches, went to see what we liked, how, you know, if they were suitable for us and we were suitable for them and so forth and so on. We belonged to the UCC church in Trumbull, Connecticut for over 20 years. And then finally, someone told us about Northport Community Church of Christ, UCC. So we came down here and we didn't know our way around, found South Biscayne, found the church, came in, and we were greeted at, well, one of the greeters at the door, and I hope I get her name right, I haven't seen her quite, I don't know if she's still alive, God bless her. Uh, her name, we called her Kissing Kathy, all right? She gave us a hug the first day we came here, gave my wife and I a kiss on the cheek, and I says, wow, you know, this is a church that a lot of friendly people, okay? So we came in, we sat down, we listened to, you know, the sermon the pastor until he gave, and we listened to him speak, and, oh, and then we went into the stewardship hall there and had coffee, and I tell you, I was surprised the welcome that we received from a lot of people in this church. And, and, that, and to that case there, we came back again another Sunday, another Sunday, and I said to my wife, and uh, I'm not trying to give Pastor Attila a big head right now, but uh, I said to my wife, I said, you know what? I believe down deep inside that I think God send Pastor Attila down here to do his work the way he does his work. And I'll tell you, he's one great pastor and I'd been in, like I said, UCC Church for 20 years, and I'd been raised as a Catholic. And even my Catholic priests, when I was an altar boy, weren't as, as great as Pastor Attila is right now. And we'll, I hope I always do. <laughs> and another reason why I'm here, you got a great choir here. Kim does a heck of a job, great pianist. Charles does good work, and whatever contribution that I can give to the church and help, you know, all I got to do is ask, and I come down here and I help them. Without this church, and I'll tell you, I believed in God for a long time, but when I came here, my belief increased a heck of a lot more than what it ever would if I did not come here. And I'm saying this is a great church, great family, and, you know, the only thing I can say is God bless all of us here. 
And thank God I'm here and my wife is here for this. And that's it. All right, so our wonderful director of music, Kim, comes up and she said, you left out several things out of the program. And I said, I did that to tell you that the Holy Spirit is guiding us this morning. So the next thing is going to be the choir. Okay. Any order you want, any order you want. I'd like to tell you the name of the piece we're doing today. It's called If You Love Me. Because I always say this wrong. If You Love Me. And our soloist today is Boo Vance. <laughs>
thank you for that great uh, reminder. And now we're going to bring our tithes and offerings. And then we're going to sing the doxology together. But as you know, our brother um, Mike Krzyzynski is going to talk about Mission Ukraine and what the local churches are doing to help the situation that arose since the war has started. And um, if you would like to support uh, this outreach, uh, which we hope and pray that you will, um, if you write out a check, just write it out to our church, NPCUCC, and put in the memo part, Mission Ukraine. Or if you are giving cash, you can put it in an envelope and do the same thing. Um, and um, so we are bringing our tithes and offerings. yet. We're going to learn a little bit of Slavic today. Place your hand on your heart and say Slava Bogu. Slava Bogu. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated. <laughs> All right, so we're so excited to have Brother Mike uh, uh, Krzyzynski with his wife Irina, Vera and Luba Kuzakova, and then Igor and Victoria. Let's give them a hand. And <clears throat> Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Uh, glad to be here. And 
I'm going to tell you one secret. Today is the first time I'm going to be speaking in English on the front of the church. Just bear with me. As pastor said, my name is Mike Kruzinski, and I'm the neighbor from the neighbor church, Ukraine Bible Church. We have a services in Ukraine every time when I uh, <clears throat> excuse me, preach in Ukraine. Uh, I'm getting nervous, but it's English, it's a double. <laughs> Not even double, it's triple. That's triple nervous, but just bear with me. And what I want to talk to you today, uh, first, when we walk in, I see the graders over here in the door, and I see he wear the Ukraine flag, upside down, but it's okay. <laughs> and, but I was gladly surprised when I walk inside, and I see everything what you decorated just for us. And I see so many people around here dressed Ukraine colors. Thank you. It's a thank you from my bottom of my heart, and that's mean a lot to us, especially in this day. Uh, maybe five years, ten years, nobody knows about Ukraine. Somebody here that's a Ukraine, little little country over there, but now the whole world know about Ukraine. And one thing is. I always think, I hear about a lot of wars, and we feel it as a Christian, we feel for that, we pray for that. But this time, I feel a little bit different. In my heart, a little bit different. I was born in Ukraine, I was raised over there. I was 22 years when I left Ukraine. I'm more American now, how to the Ukraine. My kids was born here and everything. But when this is happening, my heart is bleeding. It's, it's kind of hard. And maybe you see it over here in the news. They show some clips. But we have a family. We have a friends over there who lives there and live through this. And they show us. They tell us exactly what's going on. And sometimes I'm working. And I just don't know why. I'm just crying. My, my eyes is wet. I'm crying. Sometimes I'm in the knee. I'm working. I'm the carpenter. I'm working on the floor. And my uh, eyes is wet. It's uh, dripping. And uh, my heart is bleeding inside. That's why I'm here today. I just want to show you just a little bit what we hear in America sometimes take for the granted. And what we hear as the Ukraine churches and so many American churches, so even the government try to help Ukraine. And what we're doing over there, we've been dealing directly with the, our churches where we left. We know pastors, we know the people who's there. And we try to help with all things what we can help. The most weapon what we have here. They reach here, straight from Norport. They're reaching across the globe. That's a prayer. That's the most powerful, powerful weapon. And we ask everybody, everybody, to pray for that. And we see the whole world comes together. We have a Ukrainian churches continuously praying from the day war starts. We have in our church seven o'clock services, and it's a, another city, another city. Every church is like we know the times they continuously pray for the Ukraine. We have a powerful God, and sometimes we don't know why this is happening. And believe me, I try, I try to think with all my brain. With a little processor I have here, you know, and sometimes my processor is getting freeze up. Sometimes it's uh, overheating. I think I can fry it, my brain, 
why I'm thinking about this, you know? And we have a lot of questions. Why, 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 why? And one thing I know for sure, God knows everything. And he's holding everything in his hands. He's under control with everything. Sometimes we don't know why. But maybe, maybe God doing this, that's for me. How my heart's going to be. What I going to do? And I'm just thinking this way. I don't want to take a lot of your time. I just want to show you a couple, one video and couple pictures over there. And please... До тебе, Господь, у молитві йдемо, і в тебе розраді шукає. Огорній сильний зупиниш ти зло. І зглянешся над нашим краєм. О Боже, дай нам з неба миру, В кожну сім'ю, в кожну родину, Благослови всю країну, Підтримай тяжку годину. По горі сердець, Боже, ми стоїмо, і вірю в Твоє проведіння. Хто любить Тебе, все для них на добро, Чекаємо Твого спасіння. О Боже, дай нам з неба миру, Кожну сім'ю, кожну родину, Благослови всю Україну, І тримай тяжку, Дякую церкві з Володимир Волинського. Я волонтер, працюю, перевожу продукти в місця бойових дій. Буча, Ворзель, Немішаєво, це біля Києва, де зараз дуже йдуть тяжкі бої. Через то благодарю вас за тушонку, за сало, за всі продукти, які ви даєте. Це є велике благословення для того міста, тому що люди знаходяться в облозі і не доїдають. І ви робите велике діло. Дякуємо вам, нехай вас Бог благословить рясно кожну сім'ю, яка передала хоч якусь баночку, хоч якусь коробочку, хоч якийсь кусок. Хай вас Бог благословить, довезем і накормим людей. Амінь. Від зору твого не закований світ, ти знаєш думки всі людини. Тепло милосердя свого на зігрі, згадай про народ України. О Боже, дай нам з неба миру, в кожну сім'ю, в кожну родину, благослови всю країну, підтримай тяжку годину. The sign says, God save the Ukraine. The people praying, and w this video, what we was watching it, it's most of them, it's not a war zone. This is the north of the Ukraine, the closest to the border of Poland. And so many refugees walking, driving. If you see the cars, they're just the pack, and most of them people walking. And this is the point where they have to the women with kids, they can cross the border. The men just hugging the wife, moms, and they just turning around, they going back to fight for Ukraine. This, this is kind of, and it's 
on this road, the churches, what we're helping, uh, they try to feed everybody. They try to give them night sleep because some people walking hundreds of kilometers, that's miles, you know, like 60, 80 miles, they walking with the kids. It's not easy. And like I say, this is not a war zone, but the enemy start even shooting this area where we used to live. And I'm going to show you some pictures. That's what, that's what they do. That's not the war zone. That's what they do. That's just a regular building where the people live, where the people with kids live. This is the church, the upper. That's a church before, and that's in the village. It's no military over there, nothing. That's a church in the bottom, how it looks now, it's destroyed. This is the many pictures, same thing from the villages. This is really small village, and they just destroying everything. I even don't have to say anything. You will see how big hole over there, what kind of missile they're using. Just, just, just imagine this. And you know, they just doing this not, not in the daytime. They try to put in more terror, and they're using this like, Four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, when the people sleeping, and when they hear this explosion, that's a terror. People don't know what to do. That's how people that crowded in the church everywhere, when they can, when they walk in, they can sleep. They can just put anything underneath. They can sleep with the kids. They put a chair together and they sleep. Two, two people sleep in the chairs. And this is the, our churches over there try to help. They're helping those people who are walking, the refugees, but they also uh, bring all humanitarian aids to the war zone where the people have no food, they have no running water, they have no electricity. And it's actually still cold over there. There was recently, there was still snowing uh, in Ukraine. They loaded in their own small minivans and they take into the up north, uh, to, I mean, they take into uh, south from north and they bring the, uh, more people when they're walking. When they're driving back, they just pick up those people. They have no seats, they sit right in a where they can sit in the cargo vans, you know, and they just bring them back to the border, to the Poland. More like five million people cross the border. Different countries. Most of them, that's a woman and kids. And we have a lot of help from the European country. We have a, a lot of help from even from America, uh, the humanitarian aids, the shipping over there, and the most of them they comes to the border, the European European country with the borders with Ukraine, and with the small trucks, small vans, they cross into the border, they bring to the churches, and from churches they renting, not renting, now everything for free, volunteering. If anybody has a warehouse, they just let them use. You see the material, building materials, but they're using warehouses for the bring the food, and they take to the people who really need it. And this is, this is the thank you letter from the one of the church that sent it to us. Uh, it was in uh, March 15. I can just say just a couple, I can translate a couple uh, things. It says, uh, brother, sister in Christ, uh, thank you, letter. The church, Christian, evangelical faith, uh, city of the Chervonograd, Lviv region, uh, thank you from bottom of my heart 
for you and your church for the humanitarian aid for our church. And this time we have a, a, a refugee they're coming from, uh, I'm sorry, I tried to translate. As we, the refugee is coming from uh, Kharkiv, Kiev, Zaporizhian, uh, and now they needed a place to stay, uh, warm food. And, and this time in the, in the church, we have a 50, between 50 and 100 uh, people every day. That's the church keeping it between 50 and 100 because that's, everything is moving between 50 and 100 people every day. You know? And they say, we thank you. They, they, bring, they bring those people to the Polish uh, border. they loading, like I already said, they loading van, they taking uh, to salt with the humanitarian aids and they bring more people. And they say, thank you God, and thank you for your humanitarian aid. We can do this thing. Thank you, everybody, your church, and all your friends who gives financial aid for this cause. May God bless you, you and all your family, and give you back in the hundreds for your good heart. Also, thank you for your prayers for Ukraine and for us. Uh, with love, uh, church, uh, city, Chervonograd, pastor, Koja. This, this kind of this thing what we do, and we thank you I want to thank your pastor, and I want to thank you to give us opportunity to be here. And if you would like to help Ukraine, doesn't matter how. Doesn't matter how. I said, if you cannot have the money to give as a financial aid, you can always make those ammunitions on your knees. Amen. Wow. You, can, you can stand it on your knees once a day, once a day, and just say, God, you know everything you can save the Ukraine. We know we live in the end of those days. And the Satan's, he wanted to destroy everything. And I can openly say, this is the work of the Satan. And we have to, we have to pray for this. We have to pray for this. Thank you. And right now, I want to, our sister, they can, they can sing the song. It's going to be a Ukraine song, but you probably know it's in English. They can sing the couple verses in English too. Yeah.
Thank you, thank you. Before I'm going to end this, I want to leave it a couple things for you. It's not only for you, it's actually for me. Sorry, it's actually for me, for Brother Igor, for my wife, for all those uh, girls who was here. It's for everybody. I want to leave this couple scriptures. Uh, I'm going to ask the bro brother Igor. He's going to be reading in English. His English much, much better like mine. <laughs> uh, the first, the Timothy 2, 1 to 4. It's First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. It says, Therefore I exert, first of all, that supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. The apostle says we have to pray, pray, and he explained why and for who we have to pray. He says, you pray for the king, for those who have the power, 
because we can live peacefully. And sometimes even we don't like it, our government, we don't like uh, what they're doing, but Bible teaches different. We have to pray. If we don't like the stuff, what they're doing, we pray, make sure God change their mind and his heart. We can live peacefully. And also God want to make sure every man, for all men, can be safe. Not just as somebody, God not choosing. He have no like preferences the richer could be safe, or poor could be safe, or short people could be safe, or just the one nation could be safe. He says, all men. He wants to save all men. It's our duty to pray. Do we like it or do we don't like it? That's the Bible says for the Christian. It's our duty to pray. And the second things I want to say the Bible says we have to be salt for the earth and we have to be light for the world. We have to show this world that Jesus, through us, through the light, what we have inside. And like I said it already, we live in the end of those days <clears throat> and devils devil try to destroy it. He feel it. He feel it. His days is coming. He try to destroy every. He, if he want to, he, he's going to die. He want to take most people with him. But our duty is to be light and to be salt for this world. And the second, second thing, our duty is the, I'm going to read the Mark 16, I'm skipping some, Mark, Mark 16, 15, and 16, chapter 16, uh, verse 15, 16. 15 and 16. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Amen to this. That's our duty. That's the second our duty. Go and preach. Go and tell everybody about Jesus, about our Savior. This is our duty. And the third, I want to, our duty is, can you read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And Galatians 6, 9, 10. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. The God create us to do good Things, and he says, "The less, the less." What I, uh, Brad Igor, read it, Galatians. He says, "We can do those good things before we still have a time, because sometime maybe, maybe, we want to do some things good, but we're not going to have it at time. And this is a good time, like I say, if you want to help to anybody." not only Ukraine, and I know we can do this. We can do this. The first, we needed prayers. The second thing, we needed show we can do this physically and financially. And I want to thank you for this opportunity I have here. And I want to thank you all of them, and I want to make sure you can remember this, those three things why we here. We have more, but I just only tell you three things. Why we here, what our duty on this world. And I want to say, God bless you. God bless America. God bless Ukraine. And God bless all your family. Thank you.
Well, I think we can, uh, we can stand and um, give them a hand one more time. I want all of us to reach out towards the Ukrainian Bible Church, and we're going to pray a blessing upon that congregation. Heavenly Father, we pray for the Ukrainian Bible Church, the service that's happening there, for the pastor and his family, for every member of that congregation, and for the great nation of the Ukraine, uh, for everyone involved in this conflict, welcoming countries um, that are helping the, the refugees to give them a warm meal and a place to stay, even if it's just for a night multiply their resources, and we thank you for today, Lord, that we can unite in prayer and that we can fight a battle in a different way, just simply bowing our heads and opening up towards the work of the Holy Spirit. Make us the salt and the light that you created us to be in a more effective and a more powerful way. Thank you, Jesus, for today. Amen. And now the peace of God that transcends all understanding will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah.